Hello, boys and girls. My name is Christy Weinier. I'm the executive director of the Rutherford B. Hayes Presidential Library and Museums. And although we can't be together on the grounds today at Spiegel Grove playing our usual egg games, I am excited to read you this book called The White House Easter Egg Roll, which talks about how the White House Easter Egg Roll tradition got started and how presidents and first ladies throughout time have hosted it. So I hope that you are having a lot of fun today, and I hope that uh, even though you're not at Spiegel Grove, you're able to get outside and play some fun games. Here's some children here. I love these illustrations. They're having a good time running around. And if you've been to the grounds of Spiegel Grove before, even if you haven't, um, the grounds are the home to Rutherford and Lucy Hayes. They were the 19th president and first lady of the United States. And they were the ones who hosted the very first Easter egg, Easter egg roll at the White House. And that was because children were playing on the grounds of the Capitol building, our United States Capitol. They were playing eggs, egg games there at Easter time, but they were leaving a huge mess. I don't, I'm sure none of you leave a huge mess behind when you play games. But here's what the story says. The children always enjoyed themselves very much on Capitol Hill, but they also left a terrible mess behind every year. Tired of cleaning up after them, Congress finally outlawed, outlawed egg rolling on the grounds, and the news came as a sad shock to the children. So this is the children being told that they can't play on the grounds of Capitol Hill anymore, that they can't do their egg games there. Well, the next year, Rutherford B. Hayes was president of the United States. And it says, President Hayes came to the rescue when he invited the youngsters to come and roll their eggs at the White House. About 200 children quickly accepted his offer and made themselves quite at home on the South Lawn. The annual White House Easter egg roll had officially begun. And this is Rutherford Hayes right here, welcoming all the children to the grounds of, of the White House that year play their Easter games. Well, the presidents after Hayes thought that this was such a wonderful tradition that they decided to continue it. And Grover Cleveland actually started inviting the children to come inside the White House. And it says that the delighted kitties rushed inside grinding bits of smashed egg and broken eggshells into the plush carpet as they went. But the jolly president either didn't notice or didn't care, for he continued to hold these indoor receptions every year. So this is Grover Cleveland, the jolly president, apparently, welcoming the children inside the White House. And if you like music, I don't know if some of you really enjoy music and the sounds of uh, marching band music or, or just marches in general, but um, the president's own United States Marine Band was the first to perform, first performed at the White House Easter Egg Roll during the administration of President Benjamin Harrison. So this is Benjamin Harrison inviting the president's own United States Marine Band to perform at the Easter Egg Roll. And that is, if you've been to Spiegel Grove and participated in our Easter egg roll, we play a march with the Easter Bunny and we walk around. Um, well, we kind of march around, don't we? So that's what march music sounds like. And that's what the uh, President's Own Marine Band would perform. And they still perform uh, at the White House at the Easter egg roll. So President Cleveland liked to play something. He was, even though he wasn't a grown up, he liked to play games, and something that he liked to play was a game called egg picking. And this is what he's doing right here. So I don't know if any of you have ever played egg cooking, egg, egg, excuse me, egg picking. But um, if, if you've never played egg picking, try it out because it sounds like a lot of fun. So basically, you, you, your first step is you want to make sure that you have a hard boiled egg. But you take the, your egg and you get a partner or a couple of other of your friends and you all kind of... Um, Tap your eggs together all at the same time, and whosoever egg cracks first is the loser, and whosoever egg cracks last is the winner. So you want to hope that you have a nice strong eggshell on your egg. Well, the Easter egg roll grew over time to a point where there were some 50,000 people attending the Easter egg roll at the White House every year. Um, there were lots and lots of people. It was getting very crowded. But everybody had a good time. 
up until the time that United States entered into World War I. And at that time, they decided that for national security reasons, it wasn't safe to have the Easter egg roll at the White House anymore. So they moved it. And so this is a picture of them showing, um, moving it from the White House grounds. And they actually had it at the grounds of the um, Washington Monument. That's where they held the Easter egg roll that year. Well, the following year, the United States is fully engaged in World War I and uh, people were worried about there being enough eggs. It was very important. They wanted to contribute eggs to the war effort. And so uh, in order to save some 60 million eggs in the United States uh, and save those eggs for the war effort to give to the soldiers, everybody in the United States that year decided to have an eggless Easter, which meant that nobody dyed eggs for Easter, nobody had egg salad after Easter, um, and so because there were no eggs to be had, there was no White House Easter egg roll. So this is showing how they um, there were only there were only sheep, it said, only livestock on the grounds of the White House that year, not children playing Easter games. So when uh, President and First Lady Obama hosted their Easter egg roll, some of you might be familiar with uh, with uh, First Lady Michelle Obama's cause to get children to become more active, and, and it was called her Let's Move campaign. And so their White House Easter egg roll featured lots of activities that kids could do, lots of ways that they could run around and play on the grounds. Um, and this is a picture of President Obama. He even played basketball with some children on the grounds of the White House lawn that day of the Easter egg roll games. So it says President Barack Obama and First Lady Michelle Obama hosted the White House Easter egg roll for eight years. And they used the event to stress the importance of a healthy, active lifestyle. As part of her Let's Move campaign, Mrs. Obama used fresh fruits and vegetables harvested from the White House kitchen garden to create a kid's kitchen where chefs hold, hold, showed children how to make tasty, nutritious snacks. So do some of you like to cook? I hope some of you like to cook because it's a fun and satisfying and a delicious thing to do. When President Donald Trump and First Lady Melania Trump first welcomed children to the South Lawn in 2017 to participate in their annual White House Easter egg roll, the President and First Lady together with their son Barron kicked things off at 7.30 a.m. and the festivities continued until 7 p.m. that night, so that is a full day of activities. President and Mrs. Trump each blew a whistle to signal the start of the first Easter egg roll race and the President's own grandchildren enthusiastically took part in the historic moment. Later on, the First Lady read aloud from children's books while seated in a specially built reading nook just outside the Oval Office. So here is a picture of the most recent White House Easter egg roll. So we have traveled through time a little bit today to learn about how White House Easter egg roll events have taken place throughout the years. And I hope to see you next year at our Easter egg roll event at Spiegel Grove. In the meantime, take care.